January 2nd, 1995, something Duck fans had waited for 37 years. Unfortunately, eventual number one pick in the NFL draft, John Carter busted off an 83-yard score on Penn State's first offensive play. For Oregon's appearance in the 81st Rose Bowl, in Pasadena still a memorable one. The Oregon offense did some damage as well, piling up 501 yards against the unbeaten Nittany Lions at 38. The 20 lost. They wouldn't get back to a bowl game until the 92 Independence Bowl. Uh, the tough defeat there to, to Wake Forest. But Phil, we'll talk about their Kajana Carter, Monty Ball, another beast they're going up against, guy that can kind of fit into the Jimmy Radcliffe training style a little bit. Totally, yeah. Ball finished fourth in the Heisman race this year. And even last summer, he felt like he was a little bit overweight. So during weightlifting and conditioning during the summer, he actually ran from his house to conditioning and back. This year, he felt like he's in the best shape of his life. And the result, 800 yards, almost 800 yards more this season rushing for ball. And those 38 total TDs, you saw him out there at Camp Randall. Oh, yeah. He's a beast. Let's check back in with our beast down there in California live. Tom Ward and Rick Weissar. And again, guys, a big matchup with those running backs. Definitely. Yep. You have LaMichael James on one side, who was in the Heisman Trophy presentation uh, a year earlier. Right. This year you had Monty Ball, who made the trip to New York City. Monty Ball, 38 touchdowns on the season. Now that's really all you need to say. I mean, 38 touchdowns on the season, one shy of Barry Sanders' record of 39. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, definitely their bread and butter on offense. And at the center of this matchup, the two great running backs. And while they may be different and have their differences, they both have a desire to lead their team to a victory in the 98th Rose Bowl. Well, Michael James may have said it best this week. Now he's probably 215 pounds, and I'm like 190. So uh, there's a huge difference. The goal of the three. James, in. He runs in the eye, I run in the spread. All again, off right tackle, touchdown. I don't really think there is a comparison between the two. He and Wisconsin running back Monty Ball are nothing alike. Obviously what I see, you know, on sports and all that stuff is, is him. He's very electrifying, makes a lot of plays on his feet and in open space, and I believe that's what Oregon does a great job of, of taking advantage of his strengths. Ball runs behind the road graders of the Badger offensive line. They average over 320 pounds per guy, and they have paved the way for Ball to score 32 touchdowns on the ground this season. Uh, Monty, he's always, he always can run, he can, he can move, he can, you know, he's, he's got speed, he can move laterally like that. Same with Michael James. Um, he, he's smaller, but um, he can beat you with his feet. Um, when tackling him, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're, you're coming to bounce and really focus on keeping him in front of you. Meanwhile, Oregon's blur offense has the Badgers trying to dream up ways to slow the Ducks down. James, running behind an offensive line built around the concept of agility and quickness, was fourth in the nation with 1,646 yards and 17 rushing touchdowns, despite missing two games with an injured elbow. Both guys are extremely versatile. Ball, for example, went two for two throwing the ball this season. We've seen those kinds of backs, and in this league you see those kinds of backs, but uh, two different styles of offenses. Well, Michael James, meanwhile, returned 12 punts for an average of 11.2 yards per return and broke one for 58 yards and a touchdown against Nevada. Now, LaMichael and Monty both had stellar seasons, but LaMichael didn't score as many touchdowns as he had in previous seasons. Part of the reasons for that, the two elbow injuries that he suffered this year, missed a couple of games. James with 1,646 yards, while Ball put up 1,759, but LaMike did get fewer touches, averaging a yard better, though. The payoff, though, for Ball is the touchdowns, outdoing LaMichael in that category with 38 total scores, LaMichael James with just 18. Of course, both offenses sort of revolve around their running back, but really I think Wisconsin may lead in that category. They feed the rock to Monty Ball, and he's one of those guys that once he begins to get lathered up as the game mm -hmm. goes along, he seems to pour it on. Right, and, and that's what he said uh, during the week was that he feels as the game goes along, he gets stronger, and that's a statement with those huge offensive linemen in front of him who probably don't wear out very easily. Yeah, and we've seen both of these guys are great receivers out of the backfield. Right. We've seen LaMichael out of the backfield on mm -hmm. wheel routes. Yep. Monty Ball can slip underneath the secondary and lay in the weeds and catch the ball, and then once he's in open space, he's gone. Yep. So should be fun to watch and see how the defenses deal with these two high quality running backs. Yeah, defenses are going to have their hands full and uh, you know, speaking of Michael James, he had uh, yes, right. an interesting moment earlier this week thanks to his buddy Kenyon Barner. He caught a lot of grief after a ride at Space Mountain at Disneyland. But that wasn't the only excitement during the week. There are plenty of activities during the week. Now let's take a look back at some of those game week activities. 
It was a screaming good time for the Ducks and Badgers on their first full day in Southern California on Monday. Both teams made a trip to the happiest place on earth, Disneyland. But for the Michael James, he looked anything but happy while riding the roller coaster inside Space Mountain. Actually, it's, it's Keon's fault, you know. He, he think it was funny, and uh, actually we both thought it was funny. And it, it still is a funny deal. Uh, we didn't really know that it was going to blow up like that, but it, it really did. Just great memories, but neither one of us or anyone that was in our small group had any idea that um, it would go as far as it did. And nobody expected there to be any excitement of any kind the next night at the Beef Bowl at Laurie's The Prime Rib. However, while the Ducks were dining, Tom Diamond got some meat caught in his throat and senior offensive lineman Mark Asper saved the day by performing the Heimlich maneuver. I whipped in there and uh, the first uh, heave was a test heave because the guy seemed a little old. I didn't want to break his ribs or anything. So test heave and then he seemed like he could handle a, a full force heave. So I popped it out. We always say he, he knows how to do everything. But um, he just all calmly got up out of his seat, walked through the crowd and, you know, maybe save his life. That's just who Mark is. Uh, Mark is the most caring, loving guy that I've ever met. So, you know, for it to have been Mark Asper in that situation is not surprising at all. Friday saw both teams face media day. Some players and coaches see it as a necessary evil, while others find it a time for some more fun. That's my boy Darian right there. I, I'm training him to be a TV analyst like me. Is he going to be the next guy? I think so. Up and coming. He got the he got the verbal skills, but he don't have the personality. He kind of boring. Look at him. Oh, you go. Come on, bro. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Terrell Turner, pretty funny guy there, having a lot of fun with his buddy Darian Weems. Yeah, still to come on this return to the Roses special. We'll get our plays of the year countdown started with the first half of our top 12.